Okay, so we talked about purchase transactions, we talked about sales transactions. Um, now we're gonna talk about freight. So freight is important for several reasons. Number one, we need to know who's responsible for paying it, okay, legally speaking, and what the terms of, of the agreement are between the two organizations. And freight also matters, and these terms also matter uh, quite a bit because it tells us when the actual uh, rights, uh, legal rights to the property pass. So what happens if something is damaged while in transit? Whose responsibility is it? What happens if uh, something is stolen while in transit? And who, you know, whose insurance or who, who's responsible to cover that? Whose loss was it in the first place? So freight matters for, for several different reasons. So uh, the term we use for freight uh, is FOB, and that means free on board. Um, that that's the technical term. Um, so there's two options for FOB. There's FOB shipping point and there's FOB destination. So FOB um, shipping point, exactly kind of like it sounds, as soon as it's shipped, then the legal rights transfer. So FOB shipping point means that when it leaves the wherever it's being sold from, the buyer owns it and the seller no longer does which means that in transit, the buyer would be responsible for the freight. So FOB shipping point means the buyer's responsible for the freight. Now there's times when freight companies will require the seller to pay it up front. If that's the case, then the buyer would need to reimburse the seller. All that really matters here more than anything else is who is responsible for it and who owns it. And so FOB shipping point means just exactly that, that, that at the shipping point, legal right of transfer has occurred and the buyer now owns it, the seller no longer does at the point of the ship and when it is shipped. The second uh, FOB is FOB destination, which is again exactly like it sounds. The legal transfer of property happens when it arrives at its destination, which means the seller owns it all the way until it actually reaches its destination. So FOB destination, um, which means if there's freight charges, the seller would be responsible for paying those. Um, if they didn't pay them up front and the you know, freight company wanted payments when they delivered it and the, um, and the buyer had to pay them in order to get their, their property, um, the buyer would charge the seller uh, for that freight cost because it would not have legally been their responsibility to do so. So if you look at the examples in the chapter, um, you can see FOB shipping points the first one. It talks about buying merchandise with the buyer here, so you gotta keep that straight too, buyer versus seller. So uh, if you're the buyer, and it's, if it's FOB uh, shipping point, it says the merchandise for Magna Data is $900 terms FOB shipping point, or the buyer. So we would, and then it says we also paid the freight um, of $50 on June 10th. Well, we're the buyer, and it's FOB shipping point, which means our responsibility for the buyer, it's our responsibility to get the freight there. So what we would do in that case is we add the cost, any cost that it takes for us to get it in, uh, in the inventory, because our inventory should be held on our books at cost, and this is part of our cost of inventory. So um, the example it shows there, we had $900 uh, worth of inventory, so we debited inventory for $900, we credited, uh, we would credit accounts payable for $900, and then we would debit inventory again for $50 for the freight and credit cash because we actually paid the cash. So on the flip side of that, that is a FOB shipping point transaction with the, uh, when we are the buyer. And actually, I'm gonna pause this video and I'm gonna type that up because I think you might wanna see that. Hold on one second. Okay, so this was a transaction we just talked about. This would be if you were the buyer and you bought something for $900 and it was FOB shipping point um, and then you paid $50 in freight. We include that in the cost of inventory. So notice after this transaction, I have a total cost for this product. My cost for that inventory would be $950 to be the total of these two. Okay, so now what happens if you are the seller and it's FOB shipping point? Okay, so. Um, it says sold merchandise to Crane's company on account for $700. Um, I'm going to try this FOB destination. Hold on one second. Well, I'll just do it like it's FOB shipping point. 
So if I sold merchandise to France company on account for seven hundred dollars, then it's FOB shipping point. Cost of goods sold is four eighty, um, and Net Solutions paid the freight of forty dollars. Uh, if it's FOB shipping point, that means it would be my responsibility um, as the seller. So I'm changing what the book says and making this my FOB. Um, so no, you'll notice this journal entry doesn't follow your book, and that's okay. So if it was if I was a seller and I sold seven hundred dollars on account, cost of goods sold to me is, is 480 I'd have my accounts receivable for $700 I'd have my sales for $700 I'd have my cost of goods sold for $480 I'd have my um, inventory $180. And then if I had to pay freight, if Net Solutions paid freight of $40, I would add that in to the invoice for accounts receivable. So I have accounts receivable, because if it was FOB shipping point, remember I'm changing what the book's doing here. If it's FOB shipping point, that means that it was not my responsibility as a seller to pay it. Okay, it was the responsibility of the buyer. Um, so AR would go up by 40 and then I would pay cash for 40. Okay. Now that's if, so this is, if I'm FOB shipping point, this is the buyer's transaction and this is a seller's transaction. Okay. So now we're going to move on to FOB destination. FOB destination means that, um, that the responsibility of the legal right for transfer happens at the point of at the point of the destination, not the point of the uh, shipping point. So instead, legal right of transfer doesn't happen until it actually arrives where it's going. So in that case, how's that going to change? I'll just copy and paste this and change what needs to be changed. Make this a little faster. So for the buyer, it's FOB destination. For the seller, it's FOB destination. Okay, how does this change? So before the if we're the buyer and it's FOB destination so let's use the same things purchase merchandise from magna data for terms nine hundred dollars and we'll change it to fob destination paid freight of fifty dollars if that were the case and we are the buyer who had to pay the freight and it was their responsibility then i would issue um i would i would reduce my either reduce my accounts payable or i'd issue a debit memorandum which i don't know that they cover that in this particular chapter Top of my head. Yeah, let me see here, I'll find it. Yeah, so if I'm the buyer in a FOB destination, usually that freight would have already been paid, so I typically won't have this, so it would just be a general normal transaction like this. Uh, if I'm the seller in a FOB destination, um, then this changes from being AR to being delivery expense. And the reason for that is because AR would assume that I'm going to bill that to the customer, um, but I wouldn't bill that to the customer if it's not their responsibility. And when it's FOB destination as the seller, it's my responsibility. So I would instead have my same AR and sales and my same cost of good and inventory, but I'd have delivery expense rather than, uh, rather than accounts receivable since it was my responsibility to pay it in the first place. <laughs> okay, um, next video we'll go through um, an example transaction of buyer and seller transactions and with freight.